In this video, we're going to create a list that stores a sentence that tells us if our sprite is absent or present. So our project can currently keep track of the attendance of the three student sprites by looking at the values stored in each variable, or by looking at the sprite itself. And I could leave the project like this and show the variables when we're in the list view and hide them. Let me go over to the variables palette. I could hide them when we're not in the list view like that. I could just hide everything. But I don't really want it to look this way. I don't want the user to have to look at the value of a variable directly. I think it'd be much nicer for the user of this app to just get a list that says exactly who's absent and who's present in a sentence. So I have to create this special data structure known as a list that can hold the values of all of my variables, but in one place. Now, before I start coding, I do want to warn you that I'm probably going to make some mistakes on purpose. And then some of them will come up organically just based on the nature of scratch and like some bugs that we're probably going to face that I don't plan for. Hopefully we won't have to backtrack too much when those come up, but I do want to warn you that that might happen. Now let's begin by actually creating the list that's going to store the data that's currently inside the variables that we've created. And to do that, I'm going to go to my variables palette and click on make a list. And I want to name this list attendance. Now my stage is getting a little cluttered, so I'm going to hide all of the variables and move the attendance list over to the side, the left side of the stage. And once again, I'm going to get the functionality working for just one sprite. Abby in this case, before I work on the rest. So in the first video, I mentioned that a list acts kind of like an ice cube tray storing all the data in one place. So I'm going to make sure that Abby's data is kept in like the first position of this like ice cube tray, quote unquote, of this list. So let's look at the blocks that are available to us now that we've added a list. We have the add block, delete, delete all, insert, replace, and then we have a few other blocks. So here's what I want to do. When the project first starts, I want to make sure that we take Abby's attendance and we store it in a sentence in the first item in this list. And I want my sprites to keep track of their own attendance. So I'm going to make sure that I go to Abby and it might be tempting to use the add block. So let me just bring that over to use this add block as the command that stores the sentence in my attendance list. And let me show you what happens if we do use the add block. So I'm going to bring in a join block and the join block is going to allow me to create a sentence that the user is going to be able to read. So let's see, Abby is put a little space there. And then in the variables palette, I'm going to bring in Abby's attendance. So what's going to happen is in the first line of this code, Abby's attendance is going to be set to present. In the second line, we're going to add that present Abby is present to the first item of attendance. And if we click the green flag to run this, we can see that Abby is present is added to attendance. Now this may look good, but it's actually not because what's going to happen is if we run this again, if I click on the green flag, now it just added another Abby is present. So the add block is not what we want. We want to use a different block. We want to use the insert block. And the reason I want to use insert is because I want to be able to tell scratch exactly which position to put this sentence in. So instead of using the add block, which is just going to keep adding sentences to this list, I want to use the insert block. So now when I run my program, it's going to insert Abby is present or absent at position one. Now you'll notice that now I have three Abby is present. And to fix that, I want to make sure that I delete everything inside of attendance when we first run this app. So I'm going to bring in the delete all block and that's going to clear out my list. And then there should just be one Abby is present when we first run the program. So I'm going to click on the green flag to see if that works. And it looks like it does. Let me click it one more time to test it. And I think we're good. We just have to make sure that in the other two sprites, we don't add that delete all block because you don't need to delete all three times. One time will do. So now the next functionality that I kind of want to implement is changing the value inside of this attendance list item when we click on Abby. So if a teacher clicks on Abby right now, she should be absent. So I'm going to click on her and we see that the sprite changes costumes, but the attendance list doesn't get updated. So we want to replace what's currently there. And we do have a replace item block that we can use whenever the sprite is clicked. I'm going to put one here when Abby is present 
and I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna duplicate this and create another one when Abby is absent. Now I don't wanna replace them with like the actual word thing, but I wanna actually create my sentence again. So I'm gonna bring over this block. This is my sentence formation block and I'm gonna place that right in there. And we wanna make sure that we replace item one. So when we do this in the other two sprites, we gotta make sure that we choose the exact item that we should be replacing. And I think this should work. Let me test it out by clicking on the green flag. We see that Abby's present. And if I click on Abby, she should now be absent. And that's exactly what it says in the attendance list. If I click her again, she should be set to present and it looks like we're good. All right, so now let's move on to the second sprite. Let's move on to Amon and see what happens or see if we face any bugs by doing the same thing. So once again, I want to insert something when the app first starts and I want to insert a sentence. Let me go over to my operators palette. Let's bring in the join block and we're not going to be at position one now. We're going to change position two of attendance. And what I want to do is I want to join Amon is and if I go into the variables palette, we can get Amon's attendance value by doing that. Let me make a few copies, a couple of copies of Amon is because we're going to use them in the replace block just below this. So we want to replace item whenever we do have a switch, whenever we want to change Amon's attendance, we're going to use the replace item block, um, but not at position one. We want to replace item two of attendance. We want to make sure that it says two across the board and we're going to replace not thing, but replace it with this sentence. Amon is absent or present. This conditional is nice because it automatically sets the value of Amon's attendance right before we replace the item in the list. So let me click on the green flag to test it out because I think this should work, but let's see if we uh, have any errors. And when I click on the green flag, we see that it doesn't say that Amon is present and that's an issue. If I keep clicking on the green flag, we see that Amon never shows up. So what might be the issue here? Well, the issue might be that when we click on the green flag, the computer is running this code in a way that we don't really know. So for example, it might be adding Amon to position two of attendance, but the problem is Abby's sprite is deleting all of attendance. So maybe it's doing Abby's sprite after Amon's, which will delete what Amon's attendance is. And that's going to be a problem uh, that we might be tempted to solve in the following way. We might be tempted to maybe add a weight block so if we add a weight block before we do anything else, that's going to kind of like ensure that we don't create Amon's attendance and then delete it right after. So let's say we wait half a second. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to click on the green flag and it looks like it does work. So when I click on the green flag, it waits half a second and then Amon's attendance gets added to our list. And we could do the same thing with Avery, the third sprite. The problem is that this might create some problems in the future if the list is deleted after half of a second. So this might not be the greatest way to solve this problem. I think a better way would be to use a broadcast. After we create the attendance list and delete it and set Abby's attendance to present and add it to our attendance list, then maybe we could broadcast a message to the other sprites that they can do their attendance. So let's see what that would look like. So I'm back in Abby's sprite the sprite that's controlling the attendance list. What I want to do is I want to add a broadcast, which is going to be in the events palette. And I am going to broadcast a message right after I insert that Abby is present. Let's name this message, attendance is ready. So what we're going to do is in the other two sprites, in Amon, instead of waiting for the green flag um, to be pressed and then waiting half a second, we're going to be waiting specifically for attendance is ready. And I'm going to get rid of this block. And now when I run my program, I don't have to do some like weird hack of like waiting a couple of seconds or half a second before I start adding items to the list. I just wait for Abby to clear the attendance list, add herself to the list, and then I continue on with Amon. Now let's see if this also works for Avery, our third sprite. So once again, instead of waiting for the green flag to be clicked, we're going to wait for attendance is ready to be broadcast. And I'm going to go back into my variables palette because I'm going to insert, not at position one, but at position three, I'm going to insert a sentence telling us whether Avery is absent or present. So Avery is, 
and that's going to be my sentence that I'm going to put in the input for insert. And in my variables palette, we can get Avery's attendance value from that variable. I'm going to make a couple of copies of this reporter block that will create our sentence. And lastly, we have to replace the items at position three, because position three is Avery. And I'm going to replace them with this sentence. Now here's a moment of truth. When I click on the green flag, hopefully this works. Let's see. I click on the green flag and it did not work. So it's not creating Avery and I'm not sure why that is. But my guess is that when Abby broadcasts attendance is ready, for some reason, Amon prevents Avery from adding that item to the list at position three. So we have some issue here between Amon and Avery. So I guess what we can do is once Amon has added this item to the list, the sentence, we can broadcast another message. And I'm going to broadcast the message um, ready for Avery. And I'm going to go back to Avery. And instead of when I receive attendance is ready, I'm just going to change it to when I receive ready for Avery. I also want to change the name of that broadcast. So um, let me go back to Abby. And instead of calling it attendance is ready, let's call it uh, ready for Amon. Ready for Amon, which is our second sprite. And let's go back to Amon. And we should change this from attendance is ready to ready for Amon. And after we insert Amon into the list, we can broadcast ready for Avery. And Avery is waiting for this to happen. So once we're ready for Avery, then we add this item to the list at position three. So let me click on the green flag to see if this works. It looks like it does. Now I'm going to click on the uh, sprites to mark them absent and make sure that they change in our list. And it looks like they are. It looks like all of them are absent right now. And I'm going to make them present again, just like so. So as you can see, there are times when you can't really use the when green flag is clicked event in all of your sprites to start them at the same time because some things just have to happen first. And this is the nature of Scratch where like things happen in a very procedural order, which could also make it like really difficult to debug when things don't work the way that you expect sometimes. In the next video, I'm going to hide the students when we're in this list view and show them when we're in the attendance view. I'll also make sure that the list is only showing when we're in list view.